the geeky guy from Amelia Scott Designs, and this is an introduction to ebooks. Now, ebooks are very easy to use, but just to be helpful, I'm going to walk you through some basics and provide some tips that I've found that uh, I hope will enhance your ebook experience. Now, the basics are, like I said, very easy. It really does not matter whether you're using an Apple iPad or a, an Android tablet like a Samsung Galaxy or an Android tablet like a Kindle Fire or what they now call an Amazon Fire. Same product, I believe, just different name. Or a Nook from Barnes & Noble or a Kindle device. Now, I will note that Kindle devices are a little bit more limited, you know, the classic Kindle device, because it's all about reading books, but you can still use it. You can still read our ebook here or any ebook you want. So, let's get started. We start with the most basic use of an ebook, and that's navigation how you move forward and back one page at a time. And the way you do that is by tapping. That black dot indicates where I tapped. I'm going to tap again on the left-hand side of the page. To move back, I tap anywhere on the right side of the page to advance one page at a time. And again, I can tap anywhere on the left side of the page to move backwards. There, that's easy. If you stop right here, you can still use the ebook, but don't stop right here because there are more things to learn. The next thing you can learn is how to bring up the controls. Now this will help you a lot. If you tap anywhere in the center of the book, it brings up a set of controls at the top and the bottom. The bottom shows you where you are within the book. The top shows you several controls that you can use, and I'll walk you through those really quickly. First, on the left-hand side of the page, is, the top left-hand side of the page is an arrow. That will take you back to the library if you want to leave this book. Let me show you how that works. There, that was easy. I tapped once on that and it took me back out to the library. Now I'm going to tap on the book again and hey, we're back inside the book. The controls are not visible, so I will tap in the middle of the book and there you go, the controls are back. The next thing over is that set of dash, dots and dashes. That is the index. And there you go, I tapped once on that, and this is the index of the book. It lets me jump forward to any place I want to go in the book. So if I want to go to the Easy Connect Overview, I tap there, and hey, I'm at the Easy Connect Overview. Uh, if I want to go back to the beginning, I tap on the control, and then I tap on the preference, and there we are, we are back at the preface. The next control I want to show you is a very good, useful one. It's that pair of letter A's uh, at the upper right-hand side. Now, normally it's a pair of A's, sometimes it's a T for text. That does something very important. It lets you change the font size. So this font size is very nice for me, but if uh, your bifocals or glasses are not as powerful as my bifocals are, you may want to increase the font size. So by tapping on the slightly larger A on the right, I can increase the font size and you can see it increasing as I do it. So I'm going to take the font size back down. Uh, that is once again comfortable for me. So I'm good there. I can tap again on that letter to make it go away. 
The next one over is obviously a search. You can search if you want. I'm not gonna show you how to use that. The last item here is a bookmark. If you tap on that, it sets a bookmark where you are and that bookmark turns red. And if you advance, these pages are not bookmarked. So you see the little bookmark icon is clear. But if I come back a little bit, I had bookmarked this page. Now, this is useful for marking something that you want to come back to. You can have a number of bookmarks in the book. Uh, and the easy way to get there is to come back to the index. And then if you look at the top, it will let you move to a set of the bookmarks. And it shows that I put a bookmark on the preface. I can tap on that bookmark and it takes me right back there. Uh, that is the basic navigation and the basics of how to use the controls in the book. Congratulations, you are now very functional, but wait, there are one or two more things I want to show you. There's one more thing I want to show you about the text and the flow of the text. Um, I showed earlier how you can increase the font size to make it comfortable for you to read. The good news is you can increase the font or decrease the font size to make it comfortable for you to read. The bad news is as you change that font size, it, the book dynamically re swizzles the pages. So you may end up with images rolling over to another page where you would not necessarily expect it. Now, each section of the ebook will begin with a header like this. I've been able to program that and it always works. Uh, likewise, where there's a section heading like this one that says general hints and tips, that will always begin at the beginning of a page. But anything else could roll somewhere else depending on the font size. So for example, if you look at the very bottom of the page, there's a heading or a subhead that says batting and backing fabric. Now, you would normally not expect to see that at the bottom of the page. You would normally expect to see that with the text where it belongs. But again, since I've changed the size of the font, that rolled around. Now, if I activate the controls and then say increase the font size just a little bit more, I'll get that out of the way. And so that heading rolled over to the next page and look, there it is, batting and backing fabric and it's associated with the rest of the text. Um, that's just something that you have to deal with if you are reading a page and you expect something else to be there and you don't see it, well, advance to the next page. Here's another good example. Um, we're showing some information about how you can get started with the edge-to-edge -edge quilting technique, and I've got a list of things here, local classes, video tutorials, um, and as we flip to the next page, oops, there's an image there that's just kind of floating at the top of the page. If I come back to the prior page, I'm talking there about a video class that you can order from Annie's catalog. And unfortunately, the image just rolled over to the next page. It's not the biggest problem in the world. It's slightly bothersome every now and again, but the good news is, is that it's very easy to move around and you can always adjust the font size if you wish. I'm going to put that back up a little bit. And there we go. Now we have all the pieces together in one area. That's the uh, one thing to be aware of when it comes to changing the font size. In this section, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use links. Um, in the ebook, we've put links to different parts of the book and to additional resources, much like you'd have in a web page. Uh, so, for example, in the middle of this page, you see there's some blue text that says quilting designs on page 34. Now, uh, just so I can come back here, I'm going to show the controls. I'm going to add a bookmark by tapping on that bookmark in the upper right hand corner. You see that the bookmark has turned red. I'm going to hide the controls. The bookmark is still there. Now I'm going to tap on the blue text that says quilting designs and it jumped me 
right to that section. It's a link like a bookmark. So I'm going to navigate back to where I was, tap on the screen to bring up the controls, tap to bring up the, uh, the index. I'm going to go to bookmarks by tapping the center. I left off at general hints and tips, which you see. So I'm going to tap on that. And now I'm back to where I started. Tap in the center to hide the controls again. Now I'm going to move to the next page because I've got a few other things in here. Now you see that there's some blue text with an underline. That is a link to an external website. In this case, it's a link to YouTube. Now, the image that's right below there with the icon on it that looks like a YouTube icon, that's a link to YouTube. And if I tap either on the blue link or the image itself, it will take me out to YouTube. Watch this, I'm gonna tap on it now. Ask me, do I wanna to go to the link? I'm going to tap the word that says open, because I do. And here we are at YouTube. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the book, and now I'm back. So anything on here that has a YouTube video icon on it or anything that is blue text that's underlined, that is a live link. It will take you to some other information that we're making available to you. Cool, huh? The last thing I want to show you on how to use an ebook is how to enlarge images. Now, any ebook will let you do this. How you get there depends on the type of device you're using. Uh, with Apple Books and uh, with many others, you double tap on the image that you want to see more closely. Now, the dot will turn two colors to show that I'm double tapping here, and it has increased the size of the image. The cool thing is you can get it even bigger. Um, I'm going to use the pinch action where you take you know, your index finger and your thumb or your index finger and your middle finger. You start with them close together and then you tap the screen to, and spread them apart. I'll show that here. I can tap in two places and stretch my fingers apart to make the picture bigger. Or I can do the opposite and bring my fingers close together to make the picture smaller. And by the way, once you're in this mode, you can just drag, you know, tap and drag on the screen to move around. But look at this. Look, you can see how that needle is coming down right beside the last stitches of the prior design. Once you're done here, there's always a way to get out. There'll either be a button that says done, or there'll be an X or an X with a circle, like the one in the upper right-hand corner here. I tap on that, and I'm back out. On some ebooks, you actually tap and hold to increase the uh, size of the image. So either double tap on the image or tap and hold to make an image bigger and then use the button to get back out. So those are the basics of how to use an ebook. Actually, that's a basics and some of the advanced functions. Now, there are more things that you can do. Um, for example, if you tap and hold on any word, you can do things like highlight it or copy it or look it up. There's a link there that will look it up in a dictionary. Uh, you can write notes to yourself, um, all kinds of other things. And who knows, there might be even more things that you can find. But this is enough to make you fully functional, and I hope that this really uh, expands and enhances your use of ebooks. Take care.